Hello, good morning or good evening everyone and welcome to this new uh, webinar of the Application Development User Group. Um, so, uh, as the Application Development User Group, uh, we are a group uh, affiliated with the PASS Association where we try to talk about everything is related to the Microsoft Data Platform and uh, uh, not only from a Microsoft perspective, uh, but also taking into account uh, the, the open source and the Linux, uh, in the Linux world and today, the today webinar is right about that. The webinar, uh, sorry, the user group has been restarted uh, in 2017 with uh, this new scope, so much broader than before. Um, so we'll be uh, we'll be covering uh, additional technologies like Python, like uh, anything that uh, can connect to anything that is on the data platform. So not only SQL Server as it was in the past, but also uh, Cosmos DB, for example, Data Lake, whatever uh, the Azure data platform offers. We will cover it. So it's really, really interesting uh, time today for a developer because we have so much uh, choice uh, at our hand. As I said before, we are part of the PASS, um, of the PASS Association. Um, you can register for free at the PASS. PASS uh, is a global community where everyone is interested in the Microsoft Data Platform from a development, administration, or even business intelligence and data science perspective. So it's really useful to be um, registered. You can just have a lot of uh, resources for free. You have this kind of event like uh, online or even offline, so in-person event for free, or some uh, are uh, paid event like uh, the PASS Summit that will be delivered in the next uh, uh, winter. Um, and the virtual group, of course, are online uh, uh, online resources you can uh, you can attend to. Uh, we are a lot, so we are the application development user group. But there are always user group for everything, all, uh, basically. So data architecture, data science, database administration, everything a developer or a DBA or a BI guy may want to uh, may want to know. And also the virtual groups are also localized in specific language. So if you are more confident with your own language, like French, Italian, uh, Persian, Russian, you can also choose to participate in one of these groups. Again, uh, they are free. You can be just an attendee. You can be a speaker if you want. Uh, it's just about community, so sharing and learning from with and from the other. As, as said before, uh, right before the winter, actually, uh, the past summit will take place. It's the biggest uh, event on Again, once upon a time it was SQL Server, now it's the entire data platform, bottom premise and uh, on the cloud. It will be held here in Seattle, where I'm here right now. Um, if you can, if you want, you can still register. Uh, actually, this probably is a little bit of a slide because July 23 is uh, long gone. Uh, so you just uh, have an addition, uh, different price that once is um, advised here, but still it's a really good money for all the learning and all the connection, all the networking you can do. So I really advise you to um, try to come and learn as much as you can. Before introducing our current meeting, uh, the next meeting will be on uh, Entity Framework 2.0, so it has been just released, so the next next month we are going to see what are the new things with uh, uh, Chris Woodruff. And uh, we also have um, much more exciting, uh, much more um, meetings in the future, really exciting, so just uh, keep, uh, keep uh, uh, connected to us via Twitter, email, or even the website. Today's meeting uh, is um, is done by Maximo Trinidad that I will uh, end over everything in a couple of uh, seconds. He will uh, um, he will describe how you can work with SQL Server using uh, cross-platform uh, tools, uh, of course, maybe from Linux. Uh, he will show us also how we can use, as I said uh, before, Python, for example, to connect to SQL Server and to uh, and to interact with it. And uh, as you can see, Maximo Maximo is really an experienced experienced speaker. It's an MVP for Microsoft, but also for Sapien and Ace for Idea also. So I'm sure he's going to deliver a really great and interesting uh, uh, webinar. Right, Maximum, I hope I introduced you correctly. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, let me see if I can click here and uh, share my... Yeah, so let me, let me uh, just make you a presenter. Here you okay. go. 
And uh, in the meantime, uh, I just remember everyone that uh, you can just uh, interact with us via the question and answer or even the chat if you want. Uh, um, and actually, we immediately have a, a question that I think uh, it's worth to answer. Will the, the licensing model will be explained at any point in this webinar? We are not. I don't think we are going to cover anything about licensing, right, Maximo? Um, uh, <clears throat> licenses are not covered in here. There's more practical use of cross platforms. You can edit, uh, you know, editor the tools. Uh, not covering the license part. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so. No, no, anything about uh, nothing about uh, about the licensing this time. Maybe if if uh, people are interested, we can we can do a webinar um, a webinar only on licensing. It's it's quite uh, easier than the past, but of course now that there is also Linux involved, they understand that maybe people have some uh, um, question or, or doubt on the license. So I'll take note and I'll try to organize a meeting for the future. Okay, Maximo, it's now up Sounds to good. you. You are a presenter, so. It's your time now. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, uh, thank you very much for attending this uh, this webinar, and I appreciate very much uh, past well, uh, virtual chapter application developers who let me uh, present on on their section. I have presented before on the PowerShell side, uh, and this time I've been rolling out this year this particular topic in uh, uh, most of our school Saturdays here in the Florida. In the state of Florida, uh, with very good, um, uh, very good adoption on it. Uh, uh, no, uh, you asked about the license. No, I've been covering that part. This is more like an overall picture of how uh, SQL Server and Linux can have kind of Windows person can interact cross-platform with Linux and and Windows at the same time. Uh, we got a lot of tools out there now available. Uh, also, some free tools from Microsoft that is working good right now uh, and this is one thing that keeps evolving okay so you gotta you have the opportunity to those for Windows admins and finally to interact with your Linux administrator and share knowledge and about this particular product and it will keep evolving keep enhancing and uh, I hope that you like the presentation I have today for you So yes, yeah, SQL Server and Linux, Linux in industry leading in memory performance and security. We have connectors available to it. Python. I'm going to be showing you the Python connectors uh, in, in this case. Uh, .NET, uh, PHP. I mean, this is an incredible moment to be in technology. Okay. Now we're not only in one environment, Windows. Now we can cross-platform. We can share knowledge. We can uh, do different operating system right now. And this is one of the major piece of Microsoft having Microsoft on Linux in different distribution of Linux. Okay, as I mentioned there before, it said Red Hat, Ubuntu, Docker, SUSE, Linux. I mean, you you name it. And not only this. This is just also PowerShell. Ever since um, SQL Server Linux was on private preview, at the same time as the PowerShell came out last year. In about in July, June, July, it was already available. Uh, it was a good way to start diving into the Linux environment, uh, and I'm one of those persons. Um, so just to talk a little bit, just to mention, I'm a nine years MVP in Microsoft PowerShell, and um, I finally got a chance to dive into Linux. Uh, being one year full into Linux, just developing all these uh, uh, demos, so you can see and hopefully uh, be more open. Um, in the environment that you're dealing with right now. So first of all, on our agenda, we're going to be understanding my, uh, your environment. Uh, we're going to talk about PowerShell and SQL Server. Uh, we're going to check some some of the at least one of the connectors, the main one that right now is is available and is uh, currently uh, working pretty good. Uh, question I'm going to give for for the end, and I will provide some reference information that you might want to read after uh, the session is over. So yes, now we know this. Microsoft loved Linux. You had long time ago, you know, the fight between Macintosh, the times of Linux. Oh, Microsoft is always up, up there. They don't care about the other systems. But well, now, guess what? Collaboration is very important between systems. We know that for a long time. And one one thing that finally happened is that finally PowerShell is cross-platform, is open source, and, and and now that the product of SQL Server 
is cross-platform, now it's showing that uh, we're, we're noticing Microsoft the loft to Linux, okay? This is a good time. It's never too late to learn new technology, okay? I myself, I'm fortunate enough that ever since I started working uh, in the uh, information technology, uh, I'll be able to see the system grow. I'll be able to use 80 column card readers, punch cards, uh, teletype writer tool to, end, to enter command lines uh, uh, for operating system. I mean, you name it. I mean, I was able to experience that to a now a little small laptop is as powerful as all years ago those systems. It's incredible. I mean, I always enjoy technology and I love how this is progressing. Top demands. Okay, so Tom, in programming languages, this is kind of known already for some time, and I, and I see some some uh, statistics showing almost the same thing. But uh, in this particular one, you saw SQL as a general language. It is widely used. Java, Python, C sharp is already down there. Uh, PowerShell, believe it or not, is uh, some one of the uh, statistics that was showing it on on uh, maybe in the 20F down there, way, way down there. But it's, it's gaining popularity because right now, it, that's your automation tool. It, now it's not only for Windows. Now you can implement that in Linux or Macintosh. I mean, just, just think about this. This is all .NET, .NET oriented language. If you have experience with .NET and in how you work with .NET objects, this is very practical when you want to use it in Linux. And I hope I can show you that on one of the uh, quick samples going to demo soon. So in my environment here, I uh, have both Linux and, and Windows uh, installed. Uh, my main machine now uh, is on Linux, and I'm using a virtual machine for my Windows environment. Uh, I use a partial open source, uh, and then uh, finally I dove into using Anaconda Python 3.6. Uh, I had a blog that I previous built on Python uh, 3.52, uh, but now we're strictly going into into the uh, latest version of Python with, with Anaconda. That's just because Anaconda includes the graphical uh, tools, uh, components, which is known as the TCL, TK tools, and uh, modules. And, uh, and then, of course, when you mix that with your SQL connector, then now you can uh, uh, interact with your SQL servers. Uh, one thing I'm using for my, develop, uh, for my uh, demo purpose, uh, and I find it very useful, is uh, using OneDrive, uh, basically because like in Windows 10, One, OneDrive is already connected and it looks like it's part of your of your uh, file system, which means, uh, well, yeah, you can create a share folder on your OneDrive, and then that way, you know, you can eventually connect your Linux to access your Windows share folder, and that's one demo I'm going to show you also in here. Understanding your environment, we keep going on. If you're new to Linux, uh, let me tell you one thing. It's very interesting that Windows 10 includes a Linux distribution that you can uh, uh, install. Okay, uh, right now, the uh, the latest uh, the latest release of Ubuntu, even SUSE uh, Linux, is available on from your Microsoft Store. The only catch is it has to be the latest Windows Insider Edition. Older version, or the, or the Windows 10 RTM version might still use the beta version. Okay, so just just, just keep that in mind. Uh, for at least with your software, if you're able to you know, create a virtual machine, then you can at least, you know, build your Windows 10, enable your Insider Edition to install uh, um, when it's available, and then you keep it current. I mean, this is all about you keeping uh, um, up to date with what's coming out, and yes, there's going to be updates, and yes, there's going to be a little bit of a of a, a, a learning curve and things. But that's why it's available to you now before it goes out, and then you have the experience to you know how to deal with it. Okay. Now, cross-platform uh, editors, uh, we have the Microsoft Visual uh, VS Code, great lightweight editor. Uh, it's available in Linux and 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 Windows also, and of course we got all the all the ones that is already uh, known, but the Linux and uh, 
environment, you know, sodium, brain, um, jet brains, uh, PY charm, those are very, very good decent for standalone, you know, for the particular type of languages that you can work with. Uh, and then of course you can you can use your Windows editor to create the code and then when you want to move it to your Linux environment and you know you gotta do a process of of, of some conversion, you know, some uh, make sure you can run some specific tools against it so they can the code will keep it uh, uh, you know, for, for the Linux side. I want to show that one too. This is just a quick sample of, of um, Windows 10. Uh, in this case, I'm able to install the Ubuntu desktop, uh, which is the GUI side of, of Ubuntu in Windows 10 using the uh, uh, X server for Windows. Uh, it works. Uh, it's not supported. But, uh, if, you know, if you're just a gun ho and you want to uh, just experiment with it, it's, it, it will work. And, and, and so little tweaking involved, but uh, it's functional, okay? Especially, you know, if you want to test your scripts from the GUI, you know, from the GUI side. Uh, and uh, I'll just go ahead and give it a try. All right, so now we're talking about SQL Server 2017 on Linux. Uh, current version is RC2. Uh, it's production ready. SQL agent available. This is very interesting because you can build your your, your DTXS packages and, and run it in Linux. Uh, and you got ODBC connectivity uh, connectors available for it. I understand it's SQL Azure ready. And um, you can use uh, the MSSQL extension in your VS Code to create your SQL uh, SQL scripts and run it against SQL Server and Linux or and or attaching to a, a Windows one. Uh, in this case, we're talking about particular in SQL Server 2017 Linux. There's no PowerShell commands available, uh, but using PowerShell Core. Uh, in Linux, uh, there's some limited availability to SML, which is the SQL Server Management Object .NET class. Uh, is through a hack, uh, uh, but eventually, in the next few months, we're hoping to see something coming that will be more uh, straightforward. So you could eventually use PowerShell Core in Linux and SQL Server Management Object .NET class to build your, your, your SQL Server uh, scripts in PowerShell to manage it, okay? Uh, other than that, um, you can use what I call the non-SML way, which is uh, you can use the uh, system.data.net class, which is edio.net um, uh, provider's connection string, which means you can provide the connection string to any system and you connect to it and you can work at it. And in this case, you can run T-SQL statement in them and, and, and get results out of it. So that's 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 available out of the uh, right right now. Okay. Now PowerShell and SQL Server. Uh, as we all know, PowerShell is available on any edition of the SQL Server in Windows. Uh, from if I'm not mistaken, from SQL Server 2017 and greater. Now you have two uh, SQL Server modules available. One is what comes with the package with Microsoft is a SQL PS. And another one, you have to go to the PowerShell gallery to download. That's the community base and uh, uh, with the new command lists uh, from SQL Server 2017 and greater. They all use SMO on, on it. It's all Windows based. Uh, in Linux, uh, PowerShell, Core, uh, PowerShell Core using SMO, kind of even limited, but will be available soon completely. Uh, and then, of course, uh, if you use PowerShell Core in Windows, SMO is not available. It has to be through a hack. And it's still, eventually it's going to come available. So don't confuse Windows PowerShell with PowerShell Core. It's two different products, okay? Windows PowerShell is still, uh, RTM is still, uh, is still a Microsoft product. It's not uh, open source. PowerShell Core is the open source. You use a limited subset of the core modules of PowerShell that makes it uh, available to communicate between uh, uh, different operating systems, okay? And then the way to notify errors, uh, you know, you have some issues with either the one, Windows PowerShell, you use user voice site, and then PowerShell Core, you use GitHub, 
that's the very big distinction there. Okay. Now I, I mentioned in my in my uh, brief description of the session today, Python. Uh, Python with PowerShell, a is a good tool to mix in order to get data collection and task automation. Why? Especially because of .NET objects. I mean, uh, uh, you probably work with um, those who have worked with Python know you know you can bring a list and everything, but how do you manage that list to give you a more proper formatted result? I think PowerShell is a good um, uh, is a good tool to use with Python in order to provide a little better and especially .NET objects results. Okay, so take advantage of .NET objects in Linux with both uh, Python and, and PowerShell. Uh, this is an example of the uh, uh, SQL Server Management Studio um, with each object that you can see on, 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 the, uh, on the left panel of what is displayed. Every object you can do a right click and you'll see a start PowerShell. Okay? You can connect to a, a Linux SQL Server from Windows uh, Management Studio and, and you get the result of connecting and see the prompt coming up with your start PowerShell. It will work. Uh, uh, it's going to be, uh, that will work connected to, to SQL Server, but of course it doesn't work reverse. I mean, you can use your Windows SQL PS command line to get some results from, uh, from your Linux machine. That will be fine. Of course, you go to the Linux box, there's no PowerShell command line. So you got to wait the, uh, uh, you know, what, what to do there. So from now, client Windows will connect to Linux and you can work with your PowerShell script and everything using Windows PowerShell. Yeah, I know, it is a little bit confusing, but it's, it's, you have to grasp what, what's, what's going on in there. In the Linux environment, you don't have Windows PowerShell. You have PowerShell Core. So that's why SMO becomes important to be available on the Linux box, so you can, in this way, you have to build your own uh, SMO PowerShell script in order to uh, use it with your SQL Server. This is a, um, uh, an example of a picture from using PowerShell Core. Uh, this one of, one of the beta two. Uh, it was uh, giving me the, the result connecting to SQL Server for my Windows machine and, uh, and using the uh, SMO hack that I did, uh, which is loading the SQL tool services, getting it from GitHub and putting everything into your uh, PowerShell beta folder. And, you know, it seems to work. But this is just a hack. Eventually, again, we'll have a more straightforward solution that will avoid all this hacking. But it, it is possible to do. All right, so now the connector to SQL Server with Python, uh, as you know, in, in Windows is simple. You know, you can download the, the Python version, install it, it's fine. I suggest to go and look for your Anaconda uh, Windows version, and then you can do that in Linux to follow the instruction. Everything works works great. Um, in Linux, Python default version is 2.7. Uh, Anaconda is 3.6. So you gotta you, you got in Linux you gotta use what is called an update alternatives. In order after you installed um, uh, the Anaconda version in Linux. You don't want to keep it to be 3.6. It needs to be set back to 2.7 because all the updates you do, you do sudo apt update or sudo apt upgrades command to update your Linux system. I've seen some errors because if you leave the Anaconda active, uh, uh, it needs to be 2.7, version 2.7. So I, I was, feel free to look for uh, the update alternative command, study it, and see how can you set it up. Uh, then after that, you can use the um, SQL connectors. I found two. Uh, ODBC is the one recommended by, by Microsoft. It's widely used right now. Uh, there's another one, PYMS SQL. I'm not covering that, that one. That still might need a little more, more tweaking. But uh, both with one is fine. I mean, I, as a matter of fact, I ran both of them at the same, close to the same time, connection and, and, and response. Uh, one of the connector behaviors that I found uh, doing my testing is uh, from Windows, you can connect with your local with a local server name if it's if a, if a local instance and you have multiple instances will be computer name slash 
instance name. Uh, but in this case, in Linux, in order to, in Linux only allow you to have, for now, and if I understand very well, only single instance, okay? Uh, now, from Linux, I discovered that you can use computer name, comma, port number. And if you want to connect from Linux to a Windows machine using, uh, uh, to a Windows who have multiple instances, you can have to have to define the port number for those instances. So that way you can use computer name, comma, and the port number to get to the instance you want to read from or you execute the command to, okay? So that's, that's one thing that I discovered. I'll, I'll show you also all my scripts here. I think that, okay, I think we're ready for the demo, which is great. So now, um, so basically we're going to cover some tools. We're going to, I'm going to do an example, uh, restoring a database, and then uh, we're going to touch a little bit of, uh, of Python, and then how, gonna, how can we uh, mix them with, with PowerShell and some SMO sample and no SMO samples. All these scripts and, and documentation uh, uh, and presentation is available. Uh, I think I sent the, um, uh, our host, I sent him the, um, the, the, uh, the presentation and the scripts so you guys can download, okay? And um, hopefully you you're, you're like what I, what I got there. I, yeah, uh, I will make I will make them available just after uh, putting online also the the recording. So this is in the next days. Awesome, great, appreciate it, man. I know that they, they will appreciate that. Um, and then of course you have uh, some reference information. Want to look at? I have a couple of blog posts that I did before. And and let me tell you, this thing is keep changing so fast that every two weeks I have to do updates to all my systems in order to keep it up to date. But uh, at least this information that I provided on the MEP Award program blog uh, is still uh, pretty much active and available. So, all right, so let me just go ahead and, uh, let me go ahead and um, minimize this. And here I'm connected to my uh, Windows virtual machine remotely. And one of the first thing we're gonna do here is uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to go to my SQL Server Management object. Yeah, I'm running on a, on a laptop with 10 gigabytes, so it out a little bit. pace itself a little bit. Um, I'm using the uh, SSMS SQL Server Management Studio uh, version 17.1. There you go. There you go. Perfect. All right. So here we go. Let me just go ahead and open the database. Uh, by the way, because I'm using, uh, I'm in a work group environment, I have no AD uh, Active Directory enabled here, I have no domain. So everything based on IP address and, and uh, so they can communicate between the machines. I'm using SQL authentication only. And just to show you, oh wait, I kind of mentioned about using Anaconda uh, 3.6, and it's because uh, on SQL Server uh, 2017, uh, you can install your Python machine language in here. Uh, so you can use R and Python, and Python is based on Anaconda. Uh, it's an older, it's an older version. It's like a subset version of, of Anaconda. So that's why, uh, uh, kind of like, re re just recommend try to play with with the uh, Anaconda 3.6. Uh, so in this case, I'm gonna run my. In here, I have this version. I go on my machine Earth. And as you see in here, I have a, it's a port number. I have a multiple instance on this, on this particular uh, Windows 10 machine. Uh, I have port 1451. Uh, it's a Windows 10 machine. 
Uh, now if I go to open another SQL Server, uh, Orion, yeah, close this up, see my database is in here, uh, and then I'm going to do, okay, let's open again, version, so you've seen the current version of this one. And I'm, this one is on Ubuntu Linux. So from my Windows SQL Server Management Studio, I can connect to, you know, of course, my Windows, but I also can connect to my SQL Server in Linux, which is great. So I can browse objects, I can I have my SQL Server agent here, down, down here. It is amazing. This is, remember, this is production ready. So, so you can install it and, and use it in your production environment. So now, one thing that I want to do here is, uh, I'm going to go to here, uh, databases, right click, restore. I'm going to show you the, uh, the file system, how it looks in here. Uh, file, general, device, and I'm going to do an add. And in this case, you see my file system is on a bar up SSQL data. I'm looking for my backups. I have a folder here labeled temp SQL backup, but it's nothing here, right? All right, so what I need to do, okay, so in this exercise I'm going to do is I want to restore from my Windows uh, folder a backup into this, into my Linux machine um, from my uh, SSMS. Yes, I could probably use uh, PowerShell uh, commandlets to do a restore, but I want to just use the graphical because you, you, you can see what's going on in here. All right, so I'm going to go back to my PowerShell prop in here, or I'm using SSH to connect to my Linux machine. I'm connected to it. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to do a mount. We got a few mounts in here. And I look for the one they're looking for. Okay, so here I do a mount. This is going to mount. Uh, to my to my this Windows machine folder that I got my my backup store is going to mount it into my Linux temp SQL backups. Of course, going to ask me for my password twice. Second time is to connect to my Windows 10 machine. I'm connected. Now I'm going to go back in here. You see what's going to happen. I'm going to look again into my folder in Linux. And now I got displaying all my backups from I mount my Windows share folder into my Linux temp SQL backup machine. No FTP use in here. This is straight mount. Uh, let's say I want to restore AdventureWorks 2014 backup. And I'll click OK. Now, looks what's going to happen here. I'm going to look here into my files, and you can see here that I'm the original location for the file was on my Windows. Now it's going to restore it into my Linux uh, path. I'm going to click OK. You can see here on the side here on my list of my databases that VentureWorks is not there. It restores successfully. And now here it is. AdventureWorks tables have access to all my data. Right click. I'm going to do a list of that particular table, see what comes up. And it's working. Right? Okay. So now here you can do it. You can try for your Windows and Linux and, and, um, and you know, mounting the folder from, from Windows share folder into a Linux folder. So that's, that was the exercise here done. So now what I'm going to do is now let's work with some code. I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to open my Visual, uh, Visual Studio code. And frankly, this is the code I'm going to be working with right now. And let's go ahead and 
decide here, okay, so let's just go for the test SQL. We're going to go for, for here. This is my Python script that I, that I created. Basically, it connects to a, it connects to my Windows machine uh, here. You can see here, so F2, comma, 1451 they have my 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 ASA and password don't worry about it this is all test so I don't I don't I don't mind about that um, so we're gonna run this and we're gonna do run code now run code is one of the extensions that I loaded into the VS code and is supposed to basically run the Python code and on the, the output below here, it will display the information if it runs successfully. We're supposed to run. Let's see now. And there it is. This is the result. So basically, we connect to SQL Server. It runs. Uh, it runs the following SQL statement here that I got, and it will display in a graphical grid view uh, format. Uh, of course, this is. I'm using the label component in Python to display this. It's not. Elaborate grid view with with uh, scroll up, scroll down is is just give me a subset of the data in a graphical format, okay? In a graphical pop up, uh, so that's that's one thing I'm, I'm, I wanted to show you. This is all incorporated uh, when you install Anaconda 3.6. It's all the graphical components or modules are already included when you install it. That's the good thing about it. Uh, on version Python 3.52, you got to do a lot of separate installation and PIP module install in order to get this thing to work. Okay, and I come back, give you everything you need. Okay, so that's that, that was a good thing. All right, so you talk about the uh, Visual Studio extensions. If I click here on this little box in here, extensions, this is basically what I'm using right now for the, all the different code that I'm working with. And in this particular one that I run this this uh, Python code, I use Code Runner. That's why when I do right click and do Run Code, it runs the code automatically. Okay, and of course, just all of this uh, extensions are uh, customizable. Okay, they have a lot of parameters there, so there's a little bit of tweaking right to make it work. Because originally, uh, if you go to Linux in particular, uh, Python will run the default. You got to change it to Anaconda Python, you know, so you, it's very customizable. You have PowerShell, uh, MS SQL, and, and then a couple of Python uh, extension to be using here. Okay, let me go back. So, all right, so uh, in the next one here, this Python code that I'm displaying right now, I can run it. This I can run this one, just because uh, in this particular code, this is used. As, as, as a, it's used with, in conjunction with my PowerShell script in order to read a file. That's why it says test GUI read to GUI because it will read a file providing the information of the file path and it will display it uh, number of column, number of line lim lim limited, but it will display a GUI, a subset of that data. And we're going to demo in the next few minutes here. All right, so 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 now now we see the Python code. Now let's let's just go ahead and take a look at the at the SMO side. In particular, the one that is used in uh, data, the system data type. Now this is available right now. I mean, use use PowerShell Core in either uh, in either Windows and Linux. You can run you can run the following script information against your SQL Server, okay? And I'm going to do a subset here of the code. This is very, very good. This is part of the PowerShell extension loaded. You right click, you highlight, you right click, and run selection. And run selection. What you're going to do is you're going to go to the terminal to the terminal side. It will run the selection, and all of a sudden, boom! That's the result. Yes, the uh, um, the PowerShell extension provides you with the PowerShell integrated console. Okay, you can type at the console, you can do select and run selection, and uh, so just the same experience, similar experience 
uh, as if you were using the ISC, the Windows ISC. Okay, similar experience, uh, but a little bit more powerful. And in this case, I don't know if you notice, I highlighted Orion, which means for my Windows machine, I'm able to connect uh, this PowerShell core script is connecting to my uh, Linux SQL server, and it's bringing me. Uh, as you can see down here in the console, uh, is bringing me the first five, first five uh, lines of data uh, of the result set, which is which is great. Uh, you can take a look at the code um, on on your own when you download it. Uh, provided uh, some little piece of uh, useful information here, like you know that the single tick here means continue. Uh, so for many, so I always export to CSV file, and uh, and, and that, that will really help you for when you uh, when you build your own script. So now let's take a look at a PowerShell core uh, SMO. This is the one using the SQL Server Management Objects, and um, and I'm gonna scroll up here, and this will be the new format. This will be the new way to uh, to uh, uh, load the assemblies of SQL Server SMO in PowerShell core. Uh, and basically, you group them together because this is a hack. I got to make sure I connect change directory to my uh, PowerShell beta uh, where I have all my SMO loaded in there. That's the how to dump everything in there. Uh, and other than that, let me see. Let me include uh, connectivity to my instance in Windows 10 and the password. I'm going to do right click. And matter of fact, before I do that. Just sure. Let me clear the bottom here. CLS. I'm clearing my my uh, PowerShell integrated console here. Uh, and then right, go ahead and do it again in here. Right click, from selection. Okay, that is my first piece of the load done. And now this is the part. Next lines. The next two lines. It, what it does is connect to SQL Server, use the connection string, and I'm going to go uh, run selection. It loads, no errors, and now I'm going to run my uh, this. Now that I connected to my SQL Server in Windows here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get some information. I move things up right here. The machine is a little bit slow. Forgive me for that. Okay, I highlight the right piece of information one. Right click, run selection, and as you can see, the result set at the bottom here: Windows 10, Enterprise Evaluation Edition, uh, SQL Server RC1. That's because of my Windows have RC1. Now let's take a look at. Let's take a look at the Orion information. I'm going to highlight the whole piece of information here. Right click, run selection. You also can see that from, from my Windows, I can do Windows and Linux. And here it is. In my Linux version, I have RC2 loaded. And it shows host and platform. These two properties in the older version of. of, of SMO or SQL Server Management Studio and, and SQL Server Management Object, these are new properties. Host platform and host distribution does not exist in the older version of, of SQL Server. Okay? So that's that's new, that has been added. There's more changes to it. Okay. So now so now we got uh, we got SMO, non-SMO, SMO covered. Now how about doing some PowerShell with Python, right? So let me just clear this up here. Right click. Uh, CLS. Clear it. Uh, let's look for the uh, Python, PowerShell Python non-GUI, because sometimes you understand very well that Linux administrators don't like GUIs, right? So bro, there's a solution. You can still use PowerShell and provide information. And uh, and this one I'm gonna run, oh I already had highlighted, perfect. So here I'm Doing is um, I'm doing a here string of of the PowerShell code code. So I put in a in a string object, right? 
And in this case, I already have embedded uh, the T-SQL statement, and so that way I can get the, the result I want. Uh, let's run this, so you see the, the result set. It's gonna be a, a Python list, run selection. Everything goes well, there you go. Okay, so here it is, this is my result set. Now the, that's the, the Python list displaying my result from my query I did to my to my SQL server, right? But then again, uh, for me, this is not practical, right? So that's why, sorry for that. Uh, okay, so, so right now, uh, I wanna get that result, which is in a partial object called results, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak it. I'm gonna make sure I want to build my PowerShell.NET object the way I want it. Meaning, I'm gonna make sure that I have my columns and my and my and my values with it, right? So I'm gonna highlight this section here, which is gonna take that result object, and I'm rebuilding into a .NET object. Okay, uh, I'm gonna right click here, run selection. And this is how I want my object to look like at the bottom here, okay? So you can do this, it's a little bit, so here I'm showing in this sample, how can you rebuild and create a, a, a custom uh, PowerShell object, okay? From a Python uh, list, okay? Well, wait a minute, we just, we're not gonna stop there, right? Uh, so my last, uh, one of my, uh, best function here on cross-platform uh, uh, functions, PowerShell functions, is the following one. Here I create because, you know, we as Windows Administrator, we, we tend to love our grid view, right? We love to have that commandlet that will give us a pop-up window with a result set. Because, you know, yeah, we, we like to code in, in our console, but at the same time we have those efficient GUIs is what I call it, efficient GUIs results, you know. So here, kind of mimic a little bit uh, an outgrid view, uh, but, but in, a, in a very simple way. Uh, and the way to manipulate this is because I created a CSV, and out of CSV, I can put that back into an object and, and display it, right? So in this function here, this is a very interesting one because I'm using, uh, uh, there's some variables uh, variables in in PowerShell core that is does not exist in Windows PowerShell and could identify okay if this is Linux this is this is given by by uh, PowerShell core is already in it is part of the uh, uh, variables supported in PowerShell core if it's Linux if it's Windows uh, uh, that help you identify when you run a, a function a, 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 a procedure in PowerShell a commandlet if it's if it's this or if it's not, then you can say, okay, wait a minute, I can't run this in Windows PowerShell because it's not, this is, I, I don't understand what's going on in here. Okay, so that's the purpose of this. Uh, but I want you to see the result out of that, uh, out of that uh, Python GUI code that I created that this is called into passing the CSV file path and let me just load the function first. Selection. And then at the end here, because I could use this function in Linux and or uh, uh, Windows, in this case, this is a Windows environment, so I'm gonna run with the Windows path, right click, and we're gonna do run selection. Down here you can see it said executed, executing in Windows, Win N N32 NT. This is the result. I have a little subset uh, uh, grid view of a CSV file that I created, okay? This is amazing, but wait a minute. Okay, I show you all this in Windows, you know, and, 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 and this is great, but what about in Linux, right? Does this work in Linux? Oh, okay, well let's just Go ahead and do this. Let's go back. I'm gonna get this thing out. I'm gonna minimize this. And we're gonna go to my Linux machine. Uh, 
first thing I gotta make sure about this is uh, this due to my folder here and I got an example if I were to create files in Windows and move into my Linux machine first of all I have a folder here which I can mount is empty now right so let me close this up and I open here again it goes through the same process gonna mount my folder see here oh don't worry I already have copy that it's supposed to work okay let me see oh I typed it on password of course there you go it's mounted all right so let me minimize this one go back to my file manager and now I have all my folders here. Now, if the case that I work on Windows, I connect it, um, I could drag and drop, uh, uh, you know, I could copy my, my file. That, let's say I did that, but there's one more thing you need to do after you move your files from Windows to Linux. And in this case, you need to use the following command. Let me search for it here for a second. And it's called, uh, there you go. And it's called, DOS to Unix, and you put your your folder star dot star, you know, and that will. And if if I press it again in here, it's converting that Windows uh, file into a Unix format. And that's because if you try to run without uh, without uh, the, the code without doing this, you get some some uh, what do you call it uh, uh, file format type error. Okay, you, you that it, it will not run because if because they have some strange characters that come from the Windows environment. Okay. Uh, with that said, now what we need to do is going to uh, open VS Visual Studio Code, which is available in Linux and works great. Let's say a few minutes here there we go and you have a bash terminal here but also you have a uh, when you go into PowerShell let's open the uh, PowerShell function I did before and you see you have an integrated uh, PowerShell integrated in Linux also which is great I'm going to make sure it's loaded, you get installed first, there you go. Uh, and then I'm going to go it's a little bit slow here. Okay, let's make sure I highlight this thing here. There you go. I'm going to do right click. The same thing that you did on the window side applies. Run selection. Runs. And now, if I want to run the, want to run the uh, Linux version uh, with the correct file path, right click, run selection, and here we are. We successfully move code. Uh, this is Python and PowerShell code moved from Windows into Linux uh, after doing the DOS to Unix um, con conversion of the text file. And we have cross-platform support with our code. How about that? That is awesome. That is awesome. So let me go ahead and go back in here. So uh, I hope hope you like the presentation. Uh, it shows a little bit of code and everything. Feel free to explore my my my, my demo scripts. Have any comment or anything? Uh, uh, just just go ahead and um, email me. I'm very uh, active on my email, and um, and please check my blog site also. Twitter that's my Twitter handle. Uh, really appreciate having you guys here, and. Um,
I'm going to check on questions here, or maybe uh, Davey can help me with, with, with the questions here. Davey, yeah, are you sure. there? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. It was, uh, watching was really amazing. You really gave us the feeling of working cross-platform, because going back and forth, Linux and, uh, and Windows, and the interesting things is that it's so easy right now. And I think it's uh, it will be more and more in common in the future now that uh, SQL Server is so supported everywhere. Well, thanks well, a lot. Just, it was just, really interesting. Yeah, just just keep in mind, everyone, that that you know Python, Ruby, PHP, there those products has been cross-platform from the longest time yeah. ever. Now, finally, because now Microsoft is open, uh, has open source, is involved in open source, and now SQL, you know what? It's always a good time to to take charge of your profession. You know, it, it, this Absolutely. is the future. Go for it. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. So everyone can just choose a, his own uh, favorite environment and use it, connecting to SQL Server or whatever. Just uh, but staying uh, where they feel more confident so that's that's great yeah. so if everyone has a question it's now time for question if you have some uh, let's see so, uh, so in the meantime let me take back the um, the control so I can share my my here it is my slide so people knows where they can uh, get all the scripts uh, and the slides and also the recording uh, so no question there okay. was just a, a question on uh, on uh, when uh, SQL 2017 will be uh, global available but I answered uh, that of course we don't have yet this information but uh, being uh, uh, the release candidate to now available we can expect to have it in a couple of months if they follow the, the the usual time frame I don't know if you have more detail on this no, well, it is it is already available. It's just that right now, you know, it's production ready. You know, it's still RC, but it's production yeah, but ready. Yeah. It will be supported by Microsoft. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. So if anyone would like to start to use uh, 2017 right now, they can. The code is still not yet the RTM. Exactly. It's the release candidate, but it's supported, and it will be supported by Microsoft for being used in production. So if you want to start uh, to play with it, uh, it's the right time to start. I would say. Yeah, and and the very interesting thing that at least I found out okay. through my uh, one year experience with Linux and using this the, uh, all these products, uh, it has been that as long you have uh, uh, as long you have the first addition of of the product to the list uh, in in Linux, every time you do an update mm -hmm. and an upgrade. You know the the uh, the update and operate command in Linux. It will automatically yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, it's it, it's amazing how the experience on Linux is smooth. Exactly, I, yeah. I totally agree with that. Even even the errors sometimes when you get when you do the updates or upgrades help you help you get to what you need to fix yeah. it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, it, it is so easy to install SQL Server on Linux that it, I would say it's even easier than on Windows. <laughs> because it, you just, no, uh, it is, it is, just, just yeah, minutes. Right. Even, even on my slower machine, it's minutes. Yeah, just download, it downloads uh, everything alone, it uh, setups everything, and then it just runs. So uh, it's uh, absolutely amazing, yeah. I, they, they are really doing a great job. Awesome. Okay, so there are no questions here. Probably you are uh, so clear that everyone uh, understood, which is good. Uh, I thank you so much for for uh, delivering uh, this interesting webinar. Um, so maybe you can deliver an additional one in future. Uh, we are going to meet maybe at some uh, some conference at PASS or Ignite or some of the or SQL Saturday in future. Thank you a lot for your time. No problem. No, thanks to you. We definitely will 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 meet together. I should be in eight night this uh, in September. Okay, so, so. so we'll meet. I will be there too. So we are going to meet. That's great. Awesome, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much again. Right, Enjoy bye -bye. the day. Bye bye. bye, -bye.